a higher DPI equals a better engrave, right? Not true. If you're one of those many people that just got your first laser, maybe it's a Bolt or a Nova Plus, lasers are fascinating. And for me, when I started, one of the most misunderstood things for me was DPI. I've had a lot of questions lately, and that's made me kind of dig in for the last few weeks to try to understand DPI just a little better. Let's talk about DPI today on LaserNug. Welcome back. It's a hot one again today. For context, when I first started working with lasers, I assumed that DPI was kind of similar to high resolution photos. When I thought about DPI or dots per inch, I always figured the higher your dots per inch, the better the engraved quality. Kind of like when you get a photo. Today, you'd rather have a photo taken in 4K than in 1080p, for example. Much clearer, more detail, more vibrant. So I, I assumed that was the same interpretation of DPI. And generally speaking, for simple engraves, that's just not true. So when in doubt, I jump on the internet, I go into Thunder Laser USA's knowledge base, and I start digging for information. I reach out, Lightburn forums, uh, to the support folks at Thunder Laser as well as needed, and I try to watch a number of different YouTube videos, and the same similar type videos I watched a year and a half ago, or throughout that period, I still didn't find explained it clear enough for me. But I did get some information, piece it together, and I'm gonna to try to go through that clearly and concisely for you today. We're gonna to break that into two different parts. We're gonna talk about what I call a simple engrave versus an image engrave. In other words, simple engraves being, you're engraving a tumbler, slate coaster, leatherette, wood, those kind of things, versus an image or a photograph that you might wanna recreate on maybe some clear acrylic or on a panel of wood. Two different applications, so to speak, in my own words and in my own opinions. Let's get into it. So kind of a quick overview, and I will leave links to these articles in Thunder Laser USA's knowledge base, as well as any other reference videos or information that I, I talk about today. But from the base, you have a lens. This is one of your Thunderbolt lenses. This is a 2.5 inch lens. Your laser goes through the machine, hits the lens, and it comes down under the lens to, I believe what they call the focal point. And in essence, you've heard people talk about it. It's a dot, right? Your beam comes down, it converges to a dot. That dot has a diameter, right? It's so many millimeters or fraction of a millimeter in width. And so if you think about that dot, you can only fit so many of these dots in a given area. In this case, per inch. How do we figure out how many dots per inch this lens creates? We jump into Thunder Laser USA's knowledge base. We get on the website into knowledge base and let's just type in dot size. See if that pulls it up. And it does. So here you'll see Thunder Laser Beam Waste Matrix. And again, folks, you know I'm not an expert, but this is what I understand or how I understand this is to be applied. And of course your support folks at Thunder Laser can explain it to you probably better than me. But if you're new to lasers, hopefully this helps you to understand kind of the concept of DPI. So if we come down under here, it talks about the beam diameter or spot size for different types of machines here. And if today we're gonna to use the bolt primarily as an example. So if we get to the bolt series and we run down here, we'll see that for each one of the lenses you can get for this 30 watt bolt, which I have, it'll tell you the average spot size or what I think people refer to as the dot size. So if we take our two and a half inch lens, we know that this lens has a size or a diameter of 0.115 millimeters. So when we talk about DPI or dots per inch, you wanna figure out how many dots in one inch can that lens produce. And the calculation that I understand to be true is you take a length of one inch, so not a square inch, not any type of an area, but you're talking about one linear line, one inch long, which is equal to 25.4 millimeters, you divide 25.4 millimeters by your dot size, which is 0.115 millimeters, and that will tell you that the 2.5 inch lens produces 
an average of 220.8 dots per inch of engraving, or I guess operating. So if we're talking about just a simple engrave, like on a tumbler, we now know that that lens size will provide 221 dots per inch. Okay. So GP, why have you been using 800 dots per inch on all of your tumbler settings? Well, it's because I was wrong. Well, maybe wrong is not the word. I mean, I do get great engraves at 800 dots per inch, but it also takes me a long time to get a tumbler through the bolt. So if this lens, as an example, produces about 221 dots per inch, then do I really need 800 dots per inch on a simple engrave? And again, we'll talk about images later on in the video. So of course I had to test it. I had to. So I just grabbed an average everyday Polar Camel tumbler. This is your standard 20 ounce. Probably looks very familiar to you. I believe they call it the ring neck. And I decided to try a one and a half by two inch engrave. Same power, same speed, but I varied the DPI. If we look across the top row here, using the two and a half inch lens, my current settings, which I've been using for far too long, I think, at 800 DPI. And if I do it again at 500 DPI, and then I tested it at 225 DPI. And then just for the sake of a fulsome test, I dropped it down to 150 dots per inch, which of course is well below what the lens can produce on a simple engrave. What hopefully the camera is showing you is that there is absolutely no difference in the engraved quality of this tumbler right down to 225. And when I drop it down to 150, I can with my own eye, no glasses needed, I can see tiny black lines through my dolphin. So why is this important? Because for a very long time, I thought DPI equals resolution like in a picture. And when you're doing an image, which we'll get to, it does. But on a simple engrave where you're asking the laser to remove powder coat off a stainless steel tumbler, or the coating on anodized aluminum business cards, or coated aluminum, or different types of coated steels, maybe you'd make trophies and you're engraving the plaque for that trophy. You're just asking the laser to remove material. You're not asking it to provide depth or color, so to speak. So to wrap up this first part, it makes no sense to be pushing 800 DPI if your lens produces 221 at max, so to speak, on a simple engrave. Because at 225, 230, 300 for that matter, you've already cleanly pulled all the powder coat off of this tumbler. Turning up your DPI so high doesn't provide a better engrave on this tumbler. They're identical. Because all you needed to do was remove the powder coat so you didn't need extra dots per inch by any means. And the big benefit to this is time. Let me show you. Here in Lightburn is the file that I have for, I guess what I call my marine wrap. You folks may have seen the short. I put it out a few days ago. I had to do a set of tumblers that had kind of a sailing theme to it. So I've put together that tumbler and it's a full wrap on a 20 ounce Yukon tumbler. When I began running this on the first tumbler, I had my regular standard settings. And my settings were at 800 DPI. If you take a look at how long that one full wrap on that tumbler is going to take me, it's going to take me 33 minutes to complete. And it did. This, these timings are generally accurate. It was actually closer to 35 minutes. But then I decided I needed to start testing out what I would consider newfound knowledge or understanding about DPI. And I dropped it down and dropped it down after this test to 300 DPI. Now look at how long it takes me to do this tumbler. 12 and a half minutes. And it was about 12 and a half to 13 minutes. So what this is telling me is I'm able to do almost three tumblers in the time I used to take to do one. But most importantly, there is no difference in the quality of the engrave on either one of these tumblers. 35 minutes, 13 minutes. Let's move on to wood. Again, simple engrave, not a photograph or an image. I can alter my DPI up or down to change the color of my engrave, primarily. 
So you may have found or you're going to find that you're going to get the right or a combination of speed and power settings and depending on how you alter them will change the color of your engrave. But if you run your power up too high you begin to more or less char the wood as opposed to color it so to speak. So once I found that I've got a good engraved depth or, or a good engraved quality, I start playing with my DPI up and down and it changes the color of brown I get out of that engrave. So that for me is primarily what I do with DPI. It doesn't change the quality of the simple engrave. In other words, the dolphin is just as defined and just as cleanly engraved at 300 DPI as it is at 800 DPI. The difference is in the coloring of the wood. Because as you increase that DPI beyond, in this case, 250 or 225, you're now asking the laser to fill in more dots within that inch. So your dots, I would assume, are overlapping to some degree or running over top of each other because really it fills that inch with roughly 221 dots. Once you go above that, I think it's just trying to overlap dots or lines. That's at least my understanding in layman's terms. And I believe that's why your color changes. Let's move on to images. So GP, why'd you spend that money on getting a high performing machine that can do up to 2000 DPI if you're telling me that the lens only produces 221 DPI? Because the machine doesn't just operate or rely on only the physical performance of the lens. Let me show you. Because these two machines don't just rely on the physical dot size, Things like their firing resolution, as well as the precision of the movement of that gantry, that laser head, allows these machines to create higher resolutions. Like, for example, with images. And that allows the machine to interpret the data and recreate gradient images or colors off of high resolution photos or images. That's how you get that depth of detail, that different colors of brown because the machine doesn't just use the physical dots, but it's able to know or to identify where to overlap dots or remove dots, so to speak, to create that textured or that varying color or varying detail in an engrave. And if you remember, about a month, five weeks ago, I released a video on these pictures and the comparison between various different DPIs right up to, I believe, a thousand DPI and the ability of the laser to interpret the very gradient colors or images in a very detailed photograph and recreate it with such precision, depth and detail. And if you recall, we took a look at the trunk of that maple tree out back where you could see every single crack, knot, discoloration and the texture of the bark on that maple tree. It's outstanding. So to kind of close off today, there's been a lot of discussion lately, especially since that video about, you know, what type of DPI or levels of DPI you can achieve using lasers. And I can't speak for other manufacturers, but I know in both cases, you've seen me do detailed images on both the Bolt and this Nova Plus now, and they come out spectacular. And it's definitely a whole lot more resolution than 221 DPI. The machine takes over and manages the output of those dots and the placement of those dots and as many as it needs to up to those DPI levels, those very high DPI levels. So I hope that's been helpful if you're new. Quick conclusion, if you're doing a simple engrave, something on a surface like a tumbler, you don't need a high resolution set because it's going to take off that coating very quickly at a very low DPI. The one match to whatever lens you're using, whether it's the one and a half, the two and a half, the four inch, they all have their dot size and you can do the same calculation to determine roughly how low or what the reasonable level of DPI is without going overboard. But if you're doing things like relief or images, that's when you want to take advantage of the machine's ability to achieve a higher DPI and a much more exacting, precise, detailed engrave. Thanks for sticking around today. I hope it was helpful, especially if you're new to lasers. And by all means, as always, if there's any information that I may have misstated or may not have exactly characterized correctly, please feel free to leave it in the comments. That's what the experience and research has taught me to date. And I now have a much better understanding of how DPI actually does work with these lasers. And I'm pretty impressed. Not to mention, 
I just saved a boatload of time on a lot of simple engraves. Have a wonderful week. Please be kind to each other, and I'll see you again on the next one. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching LaserNook. Cheers.